I'd like to talk about the. Uh, uh, oh yeah, the memory and cognitive benefits of nicotine. Now I know what you're thinking. Nicotine. No. As the addictive, active ingredient in cigarettes, nicotine is a classic example of guilt by association. Named for Jean Nico, the French ambassador to Portugal who brought the tobacco plant back with him to Paris, it turns out nicotine just might be the best friend of our aging brains. If you're like me, you worry about aging and Alzheimer's, the first sign of which is something neurologists call MCI, or mild cognitive impairment. In 2012, neurologist Paul Newhouse slapped patches on 67 subjects. 33 contained a placebo, and 34 delivered 15 milligrams per day of nicotine. After six months of double-blind study, the nicotine group showed improvement in primary and secondary cognitive measures of attention, memory, and mental processing. The study concluded that there was evidence of nicotine-induced cognitive improvement in subjects with MCI. But the nicotine news gets better. A 1991 study in the Netherlands found that smokers had a lower incidence and later onset of Alzheimer's disease, with the risk of Alzheimer's decreasing as the daily number of cigarettes smoked increased. Truth be told, the neuroprotective effects of nicotine have been documented for years. There are even cute little YouTube videos put out by researchers showing nicotine molecules shepherding nascent nicotinic acetylcholine receptors to the cell surface, thus ameliorating endoplasmic reticular stress, and you know how that can hurt. Obviously, cigarette smoking harms nearly every organ in your body. Smokers risk cancer, emphysema, birth defects, and probably Republican politics. Politics. But nicotine delivery by other means? Not so much. As far as I can tell, the biggest risk of nicotine is addiction to a substance that protects your brain. But in real life, I know nothing. Thank goodness I am not a doctor and have no pretension, qualifications, or interest in giving you medical advice. In fact, anybody who would take medical advice from a comedian may already have mild cognitive impairment. But there is good data out there provided by real neuroscientists giving reasons to take another look at that, um, yeah, our old buddy nicotine.